Hello everybody. <clears throat> we have another game with the white pieces against Higor Costa, rated 1144. He tries to hit us with a Scandinavian. We are going to play d4. This is a gambit. It offers him the pawn. It's not a common way of playing, but we're going to do it. So he takes the pawn. We're just going to develop our knight, develop a piece towards the center like nothing ever happened. It also threatens the pawn. Black develops a piece and defends the pawn. Very logical move. Um, we're going to go bishop c4. Developing a piece towards the center and aiming at his king. Right? So we, we're down a pawn, but we're trying to get everything out super quickly. So black goes e6. This blunts the diagonal and opens up his dark square bishop, but now his light square bishop can never come to this diagonal. <clears throat> so, what we're going to do here is we're going to play f3. And what this is going to do is <coughs> offer him another pawn. If he takes that pawn, our rook will be unobstructed on the f-file when we castle. That means we're going to have an extra attacker on this knight. If we have a pawn on f2 and we're castled, our rook is not pressuring this knight. Big difference. So he takes this pawn. He's up two pawns. But now <clears throat> we're going to take back. So he's just up one pawn. We have three pieces out. He has one, but it's his turn. So he can bring a second one out. So it doesn't look like black is too bad, right? Um, he just develops a second piece. He gets ready to castle. He's up a pawn. But we're going to attack him. So first, let's castle. And now we have our rook staring at his knight. Okay. Now what we're going to do is, this bishop is no longer useful in this diagonal because the pawn's on e6, not e5. So we're going to bring it to this diagonal, stare at his king. And then I'm going to put my queen here, put my queen here threatening to checkmate him on h7. <clears throat> so let's see how that works. He develops a knight and attacks a pawn in the center. Um, <laughs> that's fine. I'm going to do what I told you I was going to do and just shift my queen over and ignore his attack on the pawn. So he doesn't take the pawn. He goes e5, attacking my pawn that he could have already taken. He's not threatening anything because the square is defended many times. Um, he is offering up the pawn for free for some reason. That's very weird. Like, I could just take it. And that hits his knight. Super weird. And then maybe he can put his knight here. That still looks super weird. I mean... I was going to let him take it, but I might as well take it and displace his knight. I don't know what, like, what his follow-up is. It's a little weird. I, I mean, I'm not even down material now. He can take this pawn at some point, but I'm going to try to attack his king. So yeah, he does go here and try to win it back. So he has two attackers on it, but it's already defended twice. So he can't even do that. Um, weird. I could potentially kick it, even though that weakens my king a lot. What else can I do? This sack, if he takes it, um, is anything hanging? Not really. <clears throat> we have the added option of starting with this now. We have this, but if we kick the knight, where does it go? Let's just kick the knight, because where does it go? Like, at the end of the day, he has to go here, right? And that looks bad, because I'll take it. And then, if he takes it, I'll go check. No one was king. Mm, not the attack I was going for, but a different attack. 
What else? If he goes here... I mean... I'm just gonna take it. I don't want to think about that. Now, what should my follow-up move be? Once he takes here... Queen g3, he goes over and he has the rook. I'm thinking maybe queen e4, because he doesn't have g6 anymore. He can't put the bishop here, so he has to play f5. But then en passant. And then if he takes this pawn with the rook, we give this check, he goes over. And, I mean, we have this check. And if he goes here, perhaps this check. That looks reasonable. This looks a little less good. This looks a little more good. So let's go for that. Our rooks are connected. Meanwhile, he still has two tempi at least to get his rooks touching. And we're not even down a pawn for that two tempi development lead. So he goes off of these dark squares, which might be important in defending his king in order to improve the piece with check, but his no, nothing's looking at my king except for this bishop. So there's no attack, right? So now I get to put my king to a safer spot. H1 is safer than G1 because of this diagonal. And I got to do it for free. And is you could say, oh, well, his bishop's better and more active here, but I think he might want it on this side for his king, right? So he does play this move to stop this check, but now we can on passant if he takes with the queen that's mate so he has to take with the rook to create an escape square or he could try to maybe run or something but either way we have look at our development towards the center how come we do this every game it's not by accident right and our rooks oftentimes we don't even get to utilize them fully because the opponent crumbles before that but let's see um, this rook could easily go here because it stares at his queen. Okay, so he tries to run. He doesn't even take the pawn. Um, if you do take this, he's going to try to run this way. It looks terrible because that's a foul where you could just put a rook. But you don't even have to necessarily allow that. We can maybe go here, check. Um, he can't block with the bishop because it would hang. So if you go check here... I mean, taking with the king looks suicidal, so if you just, and you can't go back, so you don't really have a choice. So this check, you either have to sack your bishop or take with the king. Um, well, let's see. Here, if he takes with the king, do, what's the checkmate? Um, well, now it looks at our rook, so that has to be checkmate. You could have gone the other way. I'm sure it's also... Uh, I didn't even bother calculating it, but if you do calculate it, I, I guarantee there's a win there. Also, if once he goes here, um, between the rooks over, the pawn pushes, there's got to be something there. So he does take like this, but, but when you see a king like this and you have this many pieces and the F file's open, you have to know there's it's game over. And you see how this F pawn missing, yes, it weakens your king, but if you can use it in an attack, look how much stronger it is than if there was a pawn here, right? Your attack is just way stronger. We wouldn't have the same checkmating ideas if, if, if we didn't have this discovery. Okay, so let's move our knight out of the way. Um, without any calculating, I'm just going to the side. His king only has one square. And uh, two squares, whoops. This definitely looks even more wrong because he's coming closer to my pieces. Um, what can I do here? What's like... All the check squares are oddly covered in a weird way. I could do one quiet. I could actually make a quiet move. Maybe something like this. But that doesn't even threaten... Um, it doesn't threaten anything because my all the squares are covered from my queen. And I would want to move my queen to get in maybe this knight check. 
That's so funny. Okay, I'm just going to go back um, to repeat the position. And I'm going to choose a different square for my knight. Just so I have a different construction for the mate. <laughs> That's pretty funny though. Maybe he won't go back. Maybe he'll go to a worse square. But if he does go back, we'll have to choose a different square for our knight. He doesn't go back. He goes there. For some reason, this looks worse to me. Um, this looks like it forces him to sack the bishop. And then this looks like checkmate. Okay, so 20 move checkmate. Let's go through the game. We just put a pawn in the center. He plays the Scandinavian. You can take it. That's, you know, what all the titled players play is they take it. Um, this, I'm playing d4. I'm prioritizing development. Morphe style. Just opening my bishops up. It's a gambit. He can take the pawn. He takes it. Now I just develop a piece towards the center. I develop a piece towards the center. And now I attack his center to speed up my development. So if he doesn't take, I'm threatening to, to just take this pawn and have a nice center, right? A strong center. So he's encouraged to take, which lets me develop my knight and just as importantly, open up the F file for my rook. So at the cost of a pawn, I'm trying to say, well, I have my knight, I got my knight out a little quicker and my rook is going to be an extra attacker fast. Is it worth a pawn? Well, you fight it out and see. So he, whatever he develops, we castle, and now we're staring at this. And the, and then he castles. And the idea is, we're gonna go put our queen here, put our bishop here, threatening checkmate in one. Then we're gonna move our knight, take his knight with our rook, and checkmate him. So we start the plan by bringing our bishop back. And then we move our queen over. And then free stuff. That was just a weird move. And now we have a forcing move. It's a threat. Which causes this. If we go to the analysis board, um, holy moly, it says it's plus 5.6 if you take the knight. We are not even, one, two, three, four, we're not even up material. And it's plus 5.6 if you take the knight, which we do. Yeah, and then they like the whole uh, queen to the center idea, which is what we did to win the game. So even though I'm not up material, you can see how these ideas are so powerful. Yeah, we sacked a pawn, but look what it caused us now granted I think this all stemmed from this move I have no idea what this was um, he should definitely take this pawn that I'm sacking because I can never get that back it's just a free pawn for him and black is better here which makes sense because he took the pawn but so this is what he definitely should have gone for I was gonna just uh, commence my attack here and see if he can withstand it but this guy he crumbled so what are some options? Um, I think before you do the bishop, maybe you move the queen. Yeah, you move the queen before the bishop. That way you don't have to deal with this pressure. Okay. But yeah, it's, it's hard to like, it's hard to withstand the, the pressure. Even if you don't, even if you take it, right? Let's say you're black. You're up some material, fine. But, uh... I don't know. Let's say I go here, right? What do you want to do? You want to move this knight and attack my queen? Well, go ahead, move the knight and see what happens. What's going to happen is you instantly get mated. So you can't move the knight. What are you going to do? Put the bishop here? That hangs this knight. So you can't move this knight. You can't move this bishop. You put this bishop here, so you're not going to move it. Um, if you move your queen, where like, where's it going and why? So like, what are you doing here? Okay, you you have a pawn. It's this extra pawn, this e pawn. Is this e pawn going to decide the game? Now, in an end game when there's no pieces on the board, right? Maybe, absolutely. But 
we're not even close to an end game, and so this pawn obviously isn't going to win the game for black in the middle game. So it's it essentially, in the, as far as the middle game is concerned, doesn't matter that he's up a pawn. So if we just look at the pieces, my queen is restricting his knight, his bishop can't move, his bishop, and okay, so what? You take, big deal. Now I'm going to put my rook here, or I'm going to leave it here, right? If you ever played six, I sack, boom, 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 and you're going to lose. Again, you want to move your knight to hit the queen or something, but you get mated. And if you can't play h6 because of sacks, you're just stuck. So, cool ideas. You're learning aggressive ideas. Ch attacking chess is the right way to play and the right way to learn. So, hopefully you learned something about attacking chess, an alternate way to play against the Scandinavian. Um, give it a try in your games. Just keep bringing out pieces and see what happens. Good luck in your chess. Subscribe.